our end behavior, you have your uh, rational function. You're going to look at, just like polynomials, the highest degree, but you look at the highest degree in the numerator and the highest degree in the denominator. And you want to pick out the highest degree term in the numerator and the highest degree term in the denominator, and then basically throw out everything else. So we're going to get rid of the low degree terms. And we're only going to keep the leading term in the numerator and denominator. What is that going to look like? Well, you're going to have a uh, a coefficient, a lot of times this coefficient will be 1, and it won't, you won't see it written. But you'll have a coefficient and then x to a power, divided by another coefficient, x to another power. Now m and n, they're definitely going to be integers, positive integers. Uh, they could be, one of them could be bigger or smaller than the other, or they could be equal. Regardless of which one's bigger or smaller, you can always factor out a divided by b. You can write it as this number times x to the m power divided by x to the n power. We're going to look at what happens if m is bigger. If m is bigger, that means if I subtracted m and n, I'd have a positive number. So I could reduce this to a divided by b times, it looks like this is written in the denominator, but it is not. This is times x to the m minus n. And how did I do that little bit of algebra? So you bring over your a divided by b, and when you bring this uh, term to the top, it, you subtract powers. This is going to act like a polynomial. So I like to think about this. If m is bigger, that means the numerator won, the denominator lost, so it acts like a polynomial. There's four ways polynomials act with n behavior. If you have an even polynomial, they act the same, even and the coefficient is now a over b. If a over b is positive, they both go up. a over b is negative, they both go down. You have odd, m minus n is odd, so this power reduces to odd. If you're positive, you have uh, up on the right, down on the left. I like to think of this as sort of increasing n behavior. If you're odd and you're negative, you get this n behavior. This is basically decreasing n behavior. What happens if they tie m equals n? Well, then m minus n will be 0. Or if you think algebraically, they will cancel out right here. You're going to reduce to y equals a divided by b. There's no x anymore. What type of line is this? This is a horizontal line. This is how you draw the end behavior. It's flat. y equals whatever number a over b is. You better not be getting uh, one of these. Neither of these should be 0. if any of these are zero, you did not look at the highest degree term. Part of the definition of being a polynomial, your leading coefficient should not be zero. So whatever number this is should not be zero. You should not be divided by zero. It should be just a number. If your uh, denominator wins, so m is less than n, the n is the winner, this is new. And we're going to reduce it. We're going to write it as 1 divided by uh, x to the n minus m. So we said n was bigger now, so n minus m is positive. What happens when x is really big? Think about putting in a number like a million. What is a million raised to a power? If, uh, if it's squared, a uh, million squared, something like a trillion, an even bigger number is the point. And if you keep making x bigger, this keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What happens to a fraction looks like n divided by a huge number? That fraction gets very small. And because of that, when x gets very big, your y value gets close to zero. When x gets uh, negative big, like negative a million, this will be uh, 1 over negative a million squared. Even if it was cubed, it would still be uh, a negative number, but it would be super tiny. So either way, your end behavior is y equals zero. These look really similar. They're both horizontal asymptotes. So I wrote horizontal line, but this is also known as a horizontal asymptote. So this horizontal line, and this one's also a horizontal asymptote. Now I will not uh, do this on the final, but some of the homework problems and the quiz problems may talk about slant asymptotes, also known as a diagonal asymptote. What happens, uh, what leads to a diagonal or a slant asymptote? Your 
uh, numerator wins, but it only wins by one. So if m is bigger, but it is equal to n plus one, so it's one more than n. So numerator one, but only one by one degree, you, you can write m as n plus one, and then you reduce this down, subtract the powers, and you have one more x on top, so it reduces to a over b times x. What is this right here? y equals a number times x, this is a line, and the slope is a over b. If a is positive, you have an increasing line. If a, uh, if a over b is positive, increasing line. a over b is negative, you have a decreasing line. Now why do I not worry about this? You basically get the same end behavior here, except it doesn't actually curve up, it just goes, it kind of straightens, it doesn't go horizontal, but it uh, keeps going up to the right, it just doesn't get steeper and steeper. It just goes diagonally up.